I think we are back <laughs> and working. Apparently, everything decided it wanted to die all at once. <laughs> so um, I guess we'll give a second for anybody to reconnect here that we uh, that we were losing. <laughs> so um, a couple of things happened. So one is something was going on with my actual desktop that I'm streaming from and the video from the capture device was going wrong and my own video was locking up. So um, OBS, which is the, the recording software I use, decided to just completely crash on me. Um, so I needed to reboot the entire machine, but we took that opportunity while that whole machine was rebooting to also reboot the Jetson, which has been running for quite some time. And so now it appears my video is working, Paul's video is working, my capture device here is uh, not working. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me let me see if I can fix that. Switch that. And just a just a quick. Um, I want want to get a quick vote here in the chat. We're happy to continue where we left off. Uh, we don't want to bore you. Um, but if you would prefer that we start from the top, we think we can get through this with less issues. Um, if someone just wants to chime in, we'll go with what the majority states there. So if you want to see us go from the top uh, with this module, uh, without the technical difficulties, let us know. And if you want to see it, see us continue live because you want to see the interesting stuff, let us know and we'll, we'll act accordingly. I'm just trying to see whether I can get this capture device working here. Maybe I prematurely said that everything was working. <laughs> All right. Well, we might be able to cheat here and I can just use the, um, I'll just use the screen thing here for that. I had Paul viewing. Ah, that works. So if you want to just kind of talk out things here, I will get the um, video just up on my screen. Let's see. All I'm doing here is um, I'm using the same thing Paul was using to see my screen without the, the delay to Twitch. I'm just going to use that URL here for that individual video. And I'm going to... Um, just put it up on my screen over here. That works. Uh, and I've got your desktop too, so that's good. I didn't have that on the previous stream. It's yeah, it's like feels feels like feel like we came into this one just a little bit uh, there was some I, I think all of the recording software was like you have recorded way too much this week and goodbye. Okay. All right, where is, that's this desktop. Okay, so this is the individual stream and we're just gonna put this in a tab here. So Aaron's mentioning, uh, keep going. Uh, th the only reason I would wanna restart, we do wanna use this as like an artifact for- Well, we can re-record this oh, after the fact can, or slice yeah, it we in. Can, we can dub that over, so. So, okay, so we're gonna do this for right now because for whatever reason, my capture device is not working, which might've been what caused the, the problem to begin with. Maybe that thing just died on me. So, okay, we have a way of viewing that screen, problem solved. So we, inside our IoT hub, we now have the data, which means we should now be able to go into our stream analytics, Power BI job, and then we should be able to test our query, we hope. Feels good, feels like it'll work. Yeah, there we go. Test the query. So it looked like we got some data there on that first execution. Uh, or the input, input preview was hydrated with data, so this is- Oh, I didn't even see that, so perfect, yeah. okay. 
everything works. Apparently, we have proven that if you just reboot, everything is fine. And so if you're wondering what was wrong there, um, it just looked like we didn't have data coming from the device for whatever reason. We rebooted the device, data started coming live. Uh, there was never really an issue with the query. Um, but uh, one thing um, we might want to do here, um, no, I think we're good. This is all good. Yeah, data's flowing. So we've got the, the forwarder now. So uh, we should be able to check in the, Power BI, you should certainly have a data set uh, once this job starts. So you might have to restart the job. So we'll do that. And you will definitely get a data set this time. And I think that my webcam cut out. <laughs> <laughs> Not again? Yeah. I, I think it was because I was messing with the other video input for um, the capture device. So I don't, I don't know whether there's a way to fix it's it. It's a good shot of you though, where it's frozen. I mean, you look happy. I'm, I'm happy and, and looking up at the TV. <laughs> <laughs> so you all will have to just enjoy my happiness. Okay, so um, we're gonna start this with one streaming unit and we're just gonna roll with this. Broken camera and all. <laughs> Okay, let's wait for this to start. And it'll probably take just like, you know, a minute or so for the job to start, but once it gets that first result, there will be a data set created in Power BI. And we're waiting. <laughs> I'm just sitting here playing with OBS well while we're waiting for this to restart because I'm really curious what happened here. Well, we um, want to see your face. I know. I have not <laughs> messed with this. Um, I have not really messed with this since I set it up to begin with. So I'm not really sure why it does not like me today. So, all right, we're, we're leaving my, my smiling face. I will deal with that after we get this right. All right. So we've deployed successfully and now, uh, is it power BI time? It is power BI time. So we will, uh, you should see a data set now, um, should be created in your account. I always worry logging into these things, like there's going to be like some dashboard here that has like a really telling name and I'm going to just basically expose it to the world. And then... Oh, like Bill Gates, super secrets. Yeah. <laughs> Dot PBI. <laughs> Go Lang friends. That's a secret one. Okay. So let's see, do we have a data set? Um, we have no options here. We did earlier. What am I missing? Oh, there we go. We still have no data sets. Oh, I don't believe that. We should totally have a data set. We should, because we have data coming in, right? We proved that. We proved that. Okay, so we've got, it's going into our cloud output. Yep. Right? So let's data just... is being forwarded. So we've got our stream analytics cloud output. Okay. And we tested that connection, that connection worked. So this should that work. Be... Is this just because the query needs time to start picking up data and pumping it in there? Cause we just started the job too. 
Yeah, let's hit a refresh on your Power BI screen. It, it, but this should be long enough. Like the data set should exist now, surely. Frozen sing along. <laughs> uh, still no data set. Um, try this real quick. I know this like really should make a difference, but uh, in the Power BI portal, there's an option for like preview. Um, Let's just switch to the classic view. I know I'm just personally more a little familiar with that. I might be able to get us a little more information once this reloads. Uh, what's that? Um, we'll go to the classic view of Power BI. Is that here? So see up there in the top, there's that new view. Yeah, let's, let's switch it back. I just want to see if that somehow changes something. Let's make absolutely sure we're in the right workspace too. That's, that's the other thing. And then let's click data sets there. Oh yeah, you should you should have a data set. This thing is pumping data. We know it's configured properly now. Let's make sure that on our output we use the right Power BI name. Data. Uh, wait. Jetson. So the group workspace is Jetson Stream Analytics, which is right. And so yeah, it should create a new data set with that name. There's, that is, yeah, that is peculiar. Hmm. Well, your workspace is in here too, right? Um, you might not have access to it. I think it's under a personal, um, boo. Yeah. Unfortunately. Did I just test that? Yeah, so that's so successful. Hmm. We definitely have data. Oh, oh yeah, we do. Oh yeah. Um let's check the you know, streaming out from IT Hub to Power BI. The only thing I can think of is well, you looked at the output just now. Um I mean, we could stop the job, start it again, <laughs> and refresh. But I mean, we just did that. We what just do you get here it. when you click on uh, data sets there in this this particular view? Yeah. Uh, look off. Nothing. Nothing. Um, can you somehow get back to the view you had just a moment ago? The new one? Um, no, the, uh, still in the old one, but you had one that was, it had said like dashboards on the left and then it says, uh, oh boy. Hmm. Let me check here. I'm looking inside my own account here just to make sure things are right. And... Yeah, I don't see why this wouldn't work though, unless we're missing a typo. And if anybody sees that, please point out how dumb we are. Um, <laughs> uh... have... Oh gosh. Yeah, so this is, we are querying the results because we've got You're our totally data too preview what's that uh, you're totally getting data the fact that that you have data on your screen right there is like yeah so we know yeah. it's coming from the device it's getting to iot hub we know that this query is picking it up from this from clause so that's where we're getting our preview from so the only thing i can think of is just here the data is not going to power bi but we have our <laughs> name is exactly what it's supposed to be. Yes. So maybe. Mm -hmm. The only thing I can think of is the connection to Power BI with the authorization. Right. Um, no, and those settings are right, but 
Let's double check Power BI one more time. And if not, let's recreate the output. I think that might be what I've already do. tested this output so that it says it works, but maybe maybe there's some sort of glitch with the first time through uh, when I authorized it or something. Yeah, we have no data sets. So that is bizarre. Oh, we can't delete it while the job's running. All right, let's yeah, just that is supposed to be the name. We know this. Well, I'm just I'll copy it from the query. Let's go this route. Delete. It wouldn't be the first time I've had I've seen something like this where just the portal doesn't create it properly and you do it again and all of a sudden, yeah. You do the same thing twice and it works. So we will see. Software is hard. <laughs> All right, that's deleting. We're going to go into our resource group. I'm just going to find the. I don't know why I like doing it this way, starting at the resource group and then creating a resource. Oh, stream analytics. Um, oh, we deleted the whole job. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, Oops. Okay. Yeah, so let's, that's totally yeah. not what I meant to do. I meant to stop the job and <laughs> delete the thing, but eh. Oops. All right. So East US cloud, one streaming unit. Okay. And then as soon as this is created... Okay, so now we create our input, IoT Hub. Um, this was IoT Hub dash, dash input. input. Failed to find IoT Hubs. This is a fun one. So when it says failed to find IoT Hubs, close it, do it again. <laughs> you can't explain that. <laughs> okay. IOT hub dash input. There we go. Intelligent video, blah, blah, blah. Consumer group SAS. Save. All right. Now create our output. Power BI. Oh, we got to reauthorize? Yeah. It, every time, yep. Now, I anticipate it's, you know, some potential pitfalls here, but not the stream analytics job. This is interesting. Um, and the fact that it was telling us that the input and output was good earlier is a little concerning. Um, All right. But I have a feeling we're going to do the same thing twice and get a different result. You think so? Oh, yeah. Well, number one, this time it found your IoT hubs. <laughs> so there was that. And then, um, I don't know, th that was just behaving weird. It's almost like it wasn't writing anything in the Power BI. The, the input was certainly coming in from the IoT hub, but it's like the output wasn't making its way. It's just pretty odd. It needed a reboot, much like everything in my office. <laughs> Why is this not? Oh, it did send the. Okay. Approving. It's funny. The last stream we've had flawless, flawless whole time. And uh, final one. I know this was supposed to be the easy one. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> it's all good though. Okay. We'll, we'll make it easy. So what was our output called? Oh. I just passed it. There we go. 
stream analytics cloud output. Okay. Group workspace. This was my Jetson. Yes. Data set name. Data set. No, that one's that one's different. We want to do an intelligent video analytics. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay. Yeah. Intelligent video analytics. Data set. And then this is just table. Okay. User token. Yep. And we try again. I'm going to blame Aaron. <laughs> actually, I, I meant one, but now I know there are actually more than one Aaron on. And I'm just going to let each of them think that they are the person I'm blaming. <laughs> okay, so um, we have our output. I'm going to, I'm just going to test that real quick. Although testing it last yeah. time was not accurate. Yeah, yeah, noted. <laughs> um, so now we'll test the query. Okay, so we're gonna need to go back and get our query, which is, I think it's up further. No, down, there's a link. There we go. I'm sure I could have typed this out from memory because we checked it about 16 <laughs> times to figure out why it wasn't working. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, that looks good to me. You got input data coming in. Let's test our uh, query. query. If this works, I'm, it's going to kill me. Like I won't be able to sleep tonight because I'm going to be wondering like what little thing was different between them. Okay. So the query works. So in theory, well, you know, while we're being candid on this live stream and I have a strong indication this there's we, Eric and I might do this one again. Uh, I will go on record to say, particularly with stream analytics, I have seen on at least a couple occasions where like I've started a job, but it didn't really start. Oh, wait, we didn't. Speaking of which, I didn't start the job. <laughs> uh, and, and when I say that, I mean like the job was started, but nothing happened. And then um, it's funny, you recreate things and all of a sudden they work. Um, so that was, um, was interesting. And I don't know why that is. I, you know, it could have been something I, I'd overseen, but um, 99 times out of 100, I don't get this type of issue. So this is um, interesting, to say the least. <laughs> so interesting is when, when was the last time we had input? I'm just curious here. Oh, good point. Uh, and that's, uh, is that a UTC time? That seems right-ish. Event process time uh, is at the 23 minute mark, which is where current UTC time would be at 23 minutes. So yeah, that's, that's live. Okay, so we're started. Let's refresh. Everybody cross your fingers. Give us a data set, please. No data set. There has to be something broken with this connection between these two because I can't see why. Um, no, I, I can't either. And this, this is unfortunately going to block us from proceeding. Well, do you, can we uh, use your data set? Are you able to give me access to that? Not immediately, no. Um, this is... Well, and part, partly, actually, um, maybe we can do something there. Let's see. So I wonder what happens if you visit, I'm going to send you a URL real quick. What happens when you visit this URL real quick in Power BI? Uh, so that should show you data sets that are purely owned by you. I wonder if there's not some sort of disconnect here. Right. 
And wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are we on the right? So I see your my workspace. That is a um, that one's created for you by. I wonder if we use your my workspace instead of the custom one you created. If that's going to give you a different result. Yes. Yeah, so we'll, we'll we'll try that in a minute. Go go back to Power BI one more time. I want to try one more thing here. Select workspaces on the left. Choose the Jetson workspace. At some point, there was a way you got the screen to say like dashboards, data sets, reports, et cetera. Not here on the left. It was actually in the center of the screen. Do you know how you did that? Uh, I mean, unless it was like a home screen or something. It, yeah, not that one. Hey, that's weird. So, okay. What happens if you click skip here? Welcome to the Jetson Stream Analytics workspace. Yeah, now wow. click click data sets here and it's still empty, isn't it? Yeah. Dude. Yeah, okay, let's change the output to instead write into my workspace instead of creating a workspace and using that. All right. Which really doesn't make a difference. It I am confused here. I, like, I feel like this connector is broken or something. I, like, I totally agree with you. Um, yeah, I don't know whether it's like maybe like an auth error in between the two, so the data is not getting there. We think that I've authenticated and allowed that to happen, but oh, bummer. We gotta do the reauth too if we recreate the output. Yeah. What happens if you create, uh, click that the little plug looking thing? That tested the output and it said it worked last time. So uh, let's use. Can I? Uh, I wouldn't let you change that way, will I? Um, I mean, we can pump it to more than one, right? Um, can we rename this one? No. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but we can still do it in the query, right? Good point. Let's Good just. Point. Yeah. Let's just try this real quick. I mean, it's it's worth trying. Hmm. Otherwise, we're going to be broken. <laughs> it would be fun to show the um, the Power BI side of things, though. <laughs> Give me a data set. <laughs> it's like, come on. Well, you are you it? are you able to share access to yours? Uh. It, so it gets kind of hairy if I do this. And the, and the reason why is because uh, that, that so, so I have one in intelligent video analytics. Let me see if I can invite you to it. That's sort of my thought, just so we can kind of uh, make forward progress into like the, the actual cool side of the Power BI stuff if we can. Let, me, then... let me investigate that while this is, um, yeah, manage permissions. Uh, add user. Yeah, I can add you to. Um, can you create a new thing. data set name? Uh, I don't know. Does the data set name matter? I'm just going to call this Power BI. And then I'm going to put it. It'll break when we import the template, but we can fix it rather easily. Yeah, because I don't see my workspace in this list of options. Okay. So it's going to have to be that. Um, does the data set name matter? I guess yes. I when we imp yes, later on it will. Yes. Video analytics data set. Little. And have you in, tried in, using no, a managed no, identity? No, no, no. Saying that, I'm starting to realize too. I wonder if that's not something where, like, maybe because I have a data set with that name, and we we happen to work for the same company, it's in a different workspace though, so it shouldn't matter. But um, I mean, maybe, maybe <laughs> those are globally unique. Yeah, let's use user token there. Have you tried using a managed identity here? Um, yeah, I, I I wasn't successful with it, so it's. Um, and it, it kind of gives you a little disclaimer about it too um, when you hover over it. 
Okay, so I just created one called Power BI. Let's test it really quick. It's just odd that the testing the output succeeds, but yet we don't ever see data end up there. Right. And so I'm confused by that. Um, I feel like our inputs are working. Let's just inputs change. gotta be working. Gotta be. Uh, We're just gonna call this power. Yeah. Well, you know what is concerning there, though? When I look at the timestamp. Yeah, we're not getting any new information, I don't think. Yeah, I th we might still have an issue on this, this data flowing in the IoT hub. That is, yeah, that, that would be a kicker here. Hmm. I wonder if... Well, well, we should also be able to see that because we would have the same issue in our um, time series insight database, would we not? Yes, you would have the same issue there. So let's, I'm going to start this in hopes that there'll be data there, but let's, let's try that. Let's actually check out our time series yeah. insights and see whether we have a gap in data because it's also quite possible that the device here is just not sending data there maybe it could be that i'm chewing up all available internet in my house which would seem really odd but nah nah it's not that it's well and the thing too i'm looking at your hub and it looked like you were getting data it looked like it. So let's just check out the time series insights real quick. And that will give us a good indication of. So like, I guess if we look at last 15 minutes, um, has there been data? See, it's like one of the things that's concerning there, when I look at the data, it looks like you have a huge gap between basically when we recorded yesterday and today. Yeah, because I turned everything off. Because okay, so everything was off. That makes sense. Uh, so this is the last 15 minutes, and it's detecting. So we've got data. Yeah, and you're getting a flat detection for people in the office, so we should be seeing that. Okay. Wait, why? I'm that? convinced it's it's, wor it's wired up right. The, the IoT hub says says so as well. This is 12:50 though, and it is. 3:32. So remember that it's using the UTC time. So right, but UTC time wouldn't be off by twenty minutes. Ah, there you, there we go. Um, so I think we are missing time. Uh, that's a very likely possibility. Because let's just say, let me see what mine says. Because I've I've got live data pumping into my TSI. I'll, I'll see. Oh wait, why is this saying fifty four? So my TSI is ending at. So our current time is ending at thirty three, and I'm seeing I'm seeing entries at thirty three in my time series insights instance. So I think this is still a problem with the device pumping data. But the end time here is actually at fifty four. That's interesting to me. It shouldn't be. Yeah, it should be 33. Yeah, that's that's weird. Uh, that 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 indicates this data is not getting into the IoT hub. I think. Yeah, because this is probably giving me the last timestamp that it received data. That's my guess. Is what's being populated there. So, uh, I mean, we can reboot the device. But no, we we just did that, or we did we did do that right when we rebooted the. Um... All right, so yeah, we'll have to change the theme of this 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 stream. I think it's going to be debugging, debugging the I why data is not going into the IoT hub. Um, uh, so yeah do one more thing here eric hit the refresh button up, up there at the top just to make absolutely sure i'm sorry the 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 one next to the share not the browser refresh ah, sorry oops that's okay um yeah florida's not a 30 minute offset right because <laughs> you 
That's the thing. It's weird. You, you seem offset. When I look at mine, it says 1434 for 1434 for uh, UTC time. Yeah, and your, yours is ending at 1254. Why? Let's look at your device. Let's look at the timestamp. It's, 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 uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> See, Watch, it's that's, yeah, yeah. The time's probably going to be off. I, I don't know whether I set, <clears throat> set up NTP or anything on it. Um, cause I'm just like, oh, another thing we can do to figure out whether this is sending the right times or not, mm -hmm. uh, log the deep stream output for the NVIDIA DeepStream SDK module and look at the timestamp for the things coming across. And if those are not matching up with time series insights, we, we know this is not going to IoT Hub. Okay, so the time is accurate on the device. So okay. unless it's using the time from the camera and that- Oh, we want to tail like the last entry if possible. This is yeah. going to flow through the millions of detections it's producing. That's not stopping now. All right. Um, so, yeah, I see. Uh, well, this is from yesterday. Ah. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> that's, that's some huge logs. And we can kill it. We can do Docker RM F, and that'll restart it. So, Aaron, I like Aaron's suggestion there on the, the new data set name. I don't think that that's the problem, though, because. Oops. Not what long. it looks like is um, the device isn't sending data to IoT Hub, which could curiously have something to do with. Oh, well, Aaron, like, Aaron says the troubleshooting is cool in the private chat we have here. So uh, <laughs> sorry. Sorry, maybe we're not supposed to reveal there's a private chat. But, um, there's always a private chat. <laughs> there's a behind the scenes. All right. I didn't know I was going to have to work this late on a Friday, but uh, <laughs> let's see. let's see what we get here. Uh, so yeah, the data set name. Uh, while while there's there was good reason to point the finger there, what's probably happening is this data is just not going up. So if you see what what Eric's data is currently sending, it's sending a 1937 um, in those those data points that are coming across right now. Okay, that's. That feels good. Deep stream is getting the right time. But remember, the next thing that the message goes to is the deep stream analytics module. So let's tail that next. Let's tail the deep stream analytics thing. And we should start seeing that it should be pushing data with that 37, about to be 38. Uh, and 42, yep, that's right. Okay, so that is pushing stuff on the 37 mark, which is exactly what we wanted. And the good news, um, it mentions errors zero, and it mentions output events 417. So data's coming out. So then this should, in theory, have new information. Hmm. But it doesn't for some weird reason. It's like, wake up. Oh, this is weird. So, so in order to get it into time series insights, we do have a, another job that's running. We could potentially restart that job. Uh, not a bad idea. Um, so technically that, that job would have been restarted from uh, when we rebooted the machine and it looked oh, healthy. Yes. Yeah, it, it does look healthy. Um, if you want to soft restart it, that won't hurt. Let's do a Docker restart for um, deep stream analytics. That won't hurt us. And now the next piece gets um, we want to look at is yeah, and that that's that should come up healthy. Well, let's let's look at its logs, and then what we're going to look at is the edge agent and the edge hub because those could be telling. I love that my head is still frozen. <laughs> <laughs> I could be doing anything right now. I could be making faces at Paul. Nobody would know. 
Okay. <laughs> Actually, I would know because in our behind the scenes chat, I think I can see you on your uh, office cam here. Oh, <laughs> you can wait. You can see me on that one. You're flying the bird at me. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, so if you can see me on that, I just figured out why OBS does not have me. <laughs> hey, there we go. Right, because the, the webcam can only be used by one thing. So I might have accidentally joined that with. Um, <laughs> I don't know which one it is. Otherwise, I would go out of it and come back in. Now you're getting some weird messages in that output log, though. Uh, uh, that's okay. It's just saying out of order arrival of a message. Okay. Probably because we restarted. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, so that just sent a message for sure. Error zero, and uh, we have output events. So let's look at the output of edge agent first. That one's usually interesting. And then we're going to look at the one for edge hub. Uh, let's see. Edge uh, and it's a lowercase e on that one, sorry. And then capital A, because naming conventions. <laughs> All right, what's up here? This is not complaining. Let's look at the Edge Hub. Ooh. See what happens when we get to the end of it. Yep, I see failures. Oh, wait. It's too expensive. It looks healthy. Um, do a soft restart on this thing. There uh, was some exceptions, so I had seen those as they were scrolling by. Yep, looking like a disconnection from the IoT hub. <laughs> so so do a soft restart on it. Let's let's see. That might be the culprit here. IoT. That was the hub, right? Or Edge Hub. Sorry. Yeah. All right. A question, Eric. You mentioned you manually restarted these containers. How did how did you manually restart them? Docker restart. Mm -hmm. uh, one by one for each of these. Uh, no, I just restarted the DeepStream one. Oh, okay. That 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 would be safe. Uh, okay. Now let's get its logs. Oh, you know, actually, RMF that thing. I'm sorry. Blow it away. Blow it away. Yeah. And uh, let's let's let Edge Agent bring it back up for us. Then we'll uh, yeah, give it a moment or so, and then we'll bring up the uh, the logs for that. Oh, what a mess! <laughs> oh, let's yeah, let's <laughs> check the logs. That's all right. Broken stuff can be fun too. Okay. We, so we might have to make this a six-part series. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like this. It looks like we're getting a clean start. And I, then I got another idea for where the culprit could be. All right, so that, that looks good. No yeah. subscription for receiving messages. <sighs> All right, check this out. This is a cool tool. Open up your VS Code instance. This is cool. You'll like this. Let's see what that freaking thing is actually sending every 15 seconds, if it is in fact sending anything. So this is like, this is a cool feature. So over here on the left where it says Azure IoT Hub, it's going to eventually populate with your device. Um, right click it. And there's an option there for start monitoring built-in endpoint. And that will that's how you can like literally see what is that thing sending to IoT Hub. And every 15 seconds, that should start spitting something out. I got a feeling it's not going to. And that points the finger at our route configuration from yesterday when we uh, redeployed the... Um, stream analytics job is that job really deployed properly and is it really doing what we want it to do is is what i'm getting at mm. 
because that is awfully quiet. So see, it's uh, it's not saying anything. Yeah. Let me let me bring one up just for I got a, I got a, a device running the same code approximately, and we'll wait to see if I get a message from mine, and then once we do, um, we'll call it quits for waiting on this one. But that is that is looking like the root cause there. And that was um, for anybody who wasn't on yesterday, this deployment template, um, we generated one so that our stream analytics module, where, where are you? This one, right? Yep. Yeah. So this one was basically populated for us. However, we have these routes here that were kind of generated and it overwrote ours. So I think what Paul is uh, thinking here is that one of these got overwritten to something that it should not have. Okay, I just got a data point from mine, so yours should have put one out in the same period of time. So it did not. So all right, let's look what the, what that route should be is uh, for DeepStream Analytics to IoT Hub. That route should be from slash messages slash modules son of a gun that's the problem it should be outputs slash summarized detections uh, with a capital s and a capital d uh wait hold on so that is whoa what... whoa whoa oh my god do you see what we did it's in the blob storage one <laughs> Let me paste you what they're both supposed to be. Okay. Holy moly. Okay, That's so uh, we, so I think we figured out what happened. <laughs> so yesterday, this was auto-generated by a cool tool that we use to just kind of add a module to this. And um, <laughs> there's this star here, and it would end up creating duplicate messages uh, because we actually have two different outputs um, summarized detections and um, what was the other one? Uh, aggregated detections. Aggregated detections. So what we really wanted was only summarized detections to come and not all of them. And um, I can't blame Paul for this because I know I'm the person who typed this in. <laughs> so that makes me guilty. That's um, okay. That's okay. <laughs> so, okay. Oh, and I actually, I copied you. The, I pasted you the wrong thing just now. So do not copy what I just sent you on our private chat. <laughs> do not copy that. I just sent you the wrong thing. But yeah, we changed it in the wrong freaking well, place. I know that this one is supposed to be summarized detections. So what is the output for Azure? Oh, no, no, no. no. I'm, I'm going to give you the whole thing. <laughs> We're going to use that. I'm going to give you the whole thing. There's no questions asked here. Ah, oh, almost let out an expletive there. Uh, it happens. Does anybody in here not make dumb mistakes like this when they they program? <laughs> it was in I the just, documentation. I, I, you just had to read and copy paste it right. And I I'm just like, want to know oh. who to admire here. Um, you know the real talk is. Um, I have a feeling we're going to scrap this recording anyways. Um, I know yesterday we were joking about. Um, you know we were joking about. Uh. uh Hey, let's let's um, you know we got a whole bunch of feedback for the the uh, you know the tooling team that's the dev this actually did send them this feedback today, and if we really wanted to blame something, it is the fact that the tooling changed this on us, um, and it it shouldn't have because, and 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 Eric, if you check your your Outlook email, you'll see that I flagged that as um, the reason why that's bad is because unless someone notices that it changed it it will create a very hard to debug issue as well, we've just proven. Like the one we've just spent an hour <laughs> trying yeah. to figure out. Exactly. Okay, so I've generated my new deployment manifest. I'm going to now come up here to my config and we <laughs> are going to create a deployment for a single device, Jetson Nano. And Jetson, take your new stuff. And you know how I know this is gonna work? Because it's going to work. It, it, and what's awesome, too, we're going to see the offline features of Edge at play. Will, will we? 
No, we won't. We won't, sadly. We said we won't. I thought I thought it would uh, flip these over, but it won't. We're going to start getting data from the time that we fix this, unfortunately. Ah, uh, I thought that would have been a cool, uh, cool demo of the offline features, but. Okay, so now in theory, we should have this, right? And then we should see data. So now you should, uh, the, the, the time series insights is a little bit behind. You can use this recording for that. <laughs> uh, Aaron, stop talking to us in the private chat. Talk to us on Twitch. <laughs> Our <okay>. job has <laughs> failed. It's okay, man. So um, that's okay. That's okay. Okay, so um, I guess we should just need to start the job, right? <laughs> I think so. I think so, yeah. All right. You start the job. Uh, and we can double check that this thing is sending messages. So let's go back to... VS code and let's do that. Let's go back to where we were monitoring and you should start seeing messages. I don't know why we didn't show that off earlier. Hey, look at that. Here we have these. data. <laughs> Yay, aggregated All right. data. All right, is this Yay. gonna work this time now? <laughs> so yeah, and it's funny, like, so Aaron was saying like, yeah, this is a good way to document how gnarly this issue is. It's um, we have a data set. Of course it's you there. Have. Of course you do. Of course you do. Of course. Can I can, can I can I stay here? I don't um I, I almost want to start this this do do we want to continue? We can continue. We can yeah. continue. But you and I, we have to do this again. We, yeah, we we'll, will live stream this again. Yeah, we'll um, we'll we'll do it from start to finish. I, I kind of want to like, I actually like leaving stuff like this though. Um, the, just because, you want. No. well, <laughs> you want a perfect take, right? Especially, so we're doing the live stream for the live stream. This type of stuff is amazing, right? It's normal developer workflow, but Paul's also using this. And I think NVIDIA is actually using some of this to demo uh, some of the things. So Paul's looking for like a good take where everything works from start to finish. I still want this to exist on YouTube because I think what are the chances that somebody does the same thing that I just did and then you can't figure it out, right? Like these, those types <laughs> of things are valuable. Deal, deal, Eric. All right, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll come around to that. If we, we, we can, let's let's let this live online, the Paul losing his sanity over a, <laughs> a misconfigurated route in an IIT deployment. And then we'll, um, We'll, we'll, we will do another take from the top to live in the repo. Because I, 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 if someone opened this up in the repo, and we're, I think they'd have probably dropped 45 we'll just minutes. We'll just have two versions, and one will be called the bloopers version. Well, I like I like Dot Kami here. Great name, by the way. I um, <laughs> said, yeah, this is great as a live stream. So right. I, I do have to remember to fix Twitch and YouTube, which will have, like, I don't know, three videos for this now. So I got to kind of... <laughs> <laughs> delete the middle one, I guess, on Twitch and for YouTube, delete both of them and combine them. I, I don't know. We'll figure it out. So, okay. So we've no, got our data. What, what would we delete? Oh, because there's there's multi-stream. <laughs> I got you. Because I think there's three in total. One of them was just a couple minutes. And oh, then I would then roll I just... with this one. The one where we actually yeah. figured it out. <laughs> that so. was... Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. You've sold us. Thank you, Dot uh, That's That's encouraging. And... <laughs> We appreciate you. So yeah, we'll continue going. So you've got data in a data set now. And so now we can consume that in a report. So check this out. Here's the fun part. Um, the rest of this is all Windows tools from here on out and, and, and messing around in the browser. So, so what could go wrong there? Um, that's a good question. Uh, today has been lots of wrongs. Cameras not working, OBS crashing. <laughs> Your face is still frozen, by the way. It, it is. And there's a part of me that kind of wants to, to try to back out of the thing that we're using. Um, we're, mm. We basically have like this rigged thing because if Paul wanted to hear me in real time, it would not work through Twitch. It'd be like super delayed. So I'm kind of sharing my voice directly with him using like web art it's it's a mess <laughs> there's so much here so you're in the wrong power bi but that's a good this is a good thing to demonstrate there's the difference between the app and the desktop tool and that looks is that is that the yeah that looks like the app we want to open the oh. power bi desktop tool. Uh, oops yep and there we go 
now it's all going to come together. <laughs> I think. <laughs> we, yeah, we hope. All right. All right. Let, getting, getting back in the mode. Things are good. Things are working. Things are good. All right. <laughs> oh, Eric, this is nothing better than a live stream. All right. So now you're going to exit that little box there. It's trying to tell you to go get data from places, which you can get data from like everything. Uh, Power BI is sick for data consumption. And we're going to do file import here. And this might work because we retain the names. You know, because everything's breaking today, I say bring it on. I hope it breaks, actually. I'm, I'd pay extra money for that. So for anybody who hasn't been watching, I have this GitHub repo that we have linked. Um, and inside it is a services folder and then a Power BI folder. And this is where I'm getting the template from. So all of this is actually available in this GitHub project. I Did I link it earlier? I think I linked it earlier. Yes. I will drop it in the chat anyway. Okay, so that's where I'm importing that from. Yes, yes. So that's part of the repo and you can bring it in. Unable to connect. And this is because it wants Paul's stuff. I hit edit. If you hit edit there, yeah, yeah. That's that's a good error. We were expecting that one. Now, now the ones that follow, uh, brace yourself. Okay. It wants us to select a data set. And that should be my intelligent video analytics owner. That is me. That's the one. That's the one. And bring that baby in. And it should just work. Mm -hmm. Ha, it didn't fully work. That's okay. And we kind of glad did that. And did I think we just doxed you too. You did. You doxed me. That's my address. <laughs> Send me mail. And that, you know what's funny about that? I could have sworn I updated this template. Oh, hey, did you get pull uh origin master on your machine by chance? Um if you don't mind, can we do that and try this again? Because it should oh, not have my it should not have my address in there. That's funny, Paul. <laughs> yeah. Aaron keeps dropping these really funny comments in our private chat, and it's like <laughs> I'm going to call you out because I think you should be in the public Aaron, one. Share with the class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Aaron. It sounds like you have something to say. Uh, <laughs> I like this. Okay, so um, oh wait, oh. So that is why um, the pull didn't work last time. Oh, I want you to stash the changes. So that's why I don't have the latest here. Okay. That's okay. Okay. So now, now you can see there, it looks like it, uh, did it update the Power BI template? Did you see that somewhere? Oh, I'm sure it is. So, um, so, oh. so just do it all again. Can like, I just import? Yeah. Or is this going to keep that the whole thing? Nah, you can, you can redo it. All it right. should be smooth enough. Import. All of you send Paul lovely things. Anybody who sees this after the fact, I will probably just edit that out. <laughs> no, that's okay. It's, it's in the overview video too. I, I did it on purpose. Um, so the people will send you stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I, I actually like going to the mailbox every day. Just don't send me, you know, terrible things or things that could harm me. Um, but yeah, love letters, you know. Um, <laughs> From your or, secret well, admirer. Uh, toys, video games, I love those. Comic books, you know. Aaron, new series, Paul and Eric, break your thing. <laughs> send us things to break. They're, they could do that. Too. We have a dashboard. Now, here's the insane part. It looks like not only that, it actually brought your data in properly. Now, the only reason, so so this is interesting. The reason why it was broken before and it worked this time is because you named your data sets um, exactly as followed in the, in, the, in the instructions. If you had not wow. done that, you would have gotten the same error. And you would have actually had to click on each one of those and remap them to whatever the new intended field was. Gotcha. So you used what, like a, a variable? 
Yeah, yeah. So you would just specify that. So I'm actually surprised that this worked. Um, I actually wanted <laughs> this to... series started pulling from cameras inside Paul's house. You're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you will want to change the picture of the house. So that is, um, you you will want to update that with with yours. So the location um, that you can see there. And uh, what what I what I love about Power BI, um, and if you're wondering how to do that, it's um, I actually think you have to remove it and re-add. You would do insert and then uh, image. Yeah, there's an image. Yeah, so you, yeah, so you can't actually create it. Um, you can't edit it, which is just bogus. Yeah, you got to go insert uh, here, image. And then we could put something in. I, I don't keep pictures of my house on my computer, so. Um... Oh, I got mine from har.com. <laughs> Uh, which for those of y'all uh, might be out of the country or whatever tuning in, that is the uh, realtor association or whatever. You know, they take pictures of your house and throw those things in in here. So, so this is good. But yes, you would update that. Um, and we could talk a little bit about like how this, these dashboards work and how you can maybe customize this with some additional info. Um, so do, do you want to update the image? I think we could start there. We'll, we'll start with the image. Um, that is, that's one of the easier visualizations that doesn't require any data. So like, if you think, if you've ever used PowerPoint or you've ever used, you know, uh, word, you know, the ribbon has like things you can add like text box button shapes. Those are non-interactive controls for, uh, power BI. And so that's, that would come from that class, the things that come from the rib ribbon there. But there's also, you'll notice there are these, these charts, and those are a bit different. Those, in fact, contain um, uh, links to specific fields in the data that has been coming across from, uh, from our streaming analytics job, which, which, is, which is the same thing as our IoT Hub data, which is our, the same thing as our summarized data from our uh, IoT device. So if you like click on, say, yeah, like that, that pie chart there, you'll notice that once you click on it, it's going to give you um, some clues as to what was used to construct that. So you see those fields that opened up there on the right? It says like uh, where it says legend. Sorry, it's over there on the right under visualizations. You're looking at the page level filters. Sorry, a little bit over yeah. to the right. Yeah, so that's the coolest thing about Power BI is like when you click on data, it it shows you the stuff in all of the other kind of report things, elements that you've built that are just associated with that data. Right. So you could slice this by, if you want to really quickly see like, where's all the detections of people, then you can go to the object slicer all the way on the left, select person, and it'll only show you people detections. Or if he wants to only see things from the office cam, you could similarly go to that sensor ID section and select um, office. What's interesting is there's no people here and I've been in my office for hours. I am apparently not a person. That's weird. And we're going to debug that before we do the redo because that should totally say that. Um, that's interesting. There's Are we not a, getting a, a person detection for you there? I wonder if we had multiple slicers on. So, so office does not show anything. Um, I mean, oh yeah, I guess it does not. So when you select office, which classes of things is it showing? I see TV monitor. Dining table and potted plant. Huh. Oh, well, maybe. So, so this is taking a snapshot of the data. And remember, we just spun this thing up, so it's possible it might need to refresh. Um, so if you click on the, you have to select home. And then it'll give you a refresh option. So if you go all the way up to the top banner there, select home. And then um, refresh. There should be a, a section there. You might get more data when you do that. You might. I, um, no guarantees. Yeah, I mean, it's also possible that, you know, I'm, I'm actually sitting. I, I would show you on my screen, but apparently all of my cameras don't want to work appropriately um oh wait 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 um i do have the tab opened here 
Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. So you can see me sitting at my desk here. I've got a lot going on over here too. Oh, it does look like it's detecting me though. What's yeah, it's it? detecting you big time. Now, why isn't that going in? Let me click on. Board? Let me click on me. What does it think I am? It thinks I'm a person, and it thinks the iMac monitor over there is a TV monitor. I'm yeah. trying to think. What could be wrong with that? Why would it not be picking up? Does it pick a person for the street or the office cam? Or, I'm sorry, the, the, the one you have, the other cam? Uh, for the outside camera? Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it did earlier when there were people. Okay. No, I mean like in the Power BI report, you see indications. Oh, that, uh, that there were people on the street. Uh, yeah. Oh, wait, wrong tool. You know what? So I, wonder, I wonder why it wouldn't, because yeah, clearly. Yeah, I don't see people in at all. In either. Okay, so that's telling. Why would we not see person in either? Well, let's look inside our time series insights. Do we see people? Well, we got to be seeing people. Go away. <laughs> oh, there are people. That's funny. Um, hold on. Where where are they? Uh, I've got kids in the yard waving. <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh, that's funny. <laughs> all right. So uh, we have vehicles. I don't. I don't know. Do we see people? And do we see people like at the current time? Oh, uh, update your. You're still oh. looking at uh, old data. Let's look at the last fifteen minutes. Sorry, there we go. Uh, street camera vehicle. Let's just look for people in both of these. Uh, person. So yeah, we're getting detections of people here. So the office camera. You should be getting a whole bunch of detections of people though, because that's like rapidly watching you. If hold if somebody holds up a photo of that scene in front of the camera, will it detect objects in the picture, or is it smart enough to know this is not a real thing? It is not smart enough. <laughs> yeah, it'll it'll think. Yeah, you can fool it. it you can because the difficulty with these things is it is um, the detection is no different than actually feeding it a bunch of images in succession. So each individual detection is based on a frame of video and not based on like awareness of the environment. So the detection is no different than if we just handed it a JPEG and said, is there something in it? So what happens if we, um, instead of last 50, can, can we go, oh, uh, so you've got a two second interval there. Okay. Yeah. That seems right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so you are, you're, you're definitely convinced you're getting people detections. Uh, let's do one more thing. Uh, go to your VS code where we were monitoring the output. Let's, inf let's, let's double check that it is in fact sending people data. Because that should be in your Power BI report. And, and oddly, it's not showing up. That's concerning. Yeah, I see person in your data. Um, Train. Oh, it, it's telling you it's it's already monitoring, but that's that's okay. But we saw hey, so some... that's weird. I was come we're not getting any new messages. There's a new one. There's a person. Um, where? Oh, um, maybe I read that wrong. Back in VS Code, I'm sorry. 1948. 348. So we're at like 408. That was like 10 minutes ago. But we should still have those things in our Power BI. Yeah, but you know what's weird? You're not getting new messages there. <laughs> Why? Why? That is weird. It's uh, the rest. And we did start getting data, though, so... Did something crash? I mean, we we do have to remember though too, like if we go into this device, um, that's my desktop. If we go into this device and we just, I mean, we are absolutely pegged here. So it's quite possible that <laughs> messages just aren't leaving, right? <laughs> 
Okay, yeah. No, I'm sorry, I was watching the Twitch screen, so there's probably a delay there, but I saw just, just I saw exactly what you mean. Yeah, it is. It we are beyond saturation at this point, so I think that the lack of messages coming through likely are just time that the process isn't getting enough CPU time to drop the messages, mm -hmm. and that's mainly our fault. I really wanted to buy um, the expensive um, NVIDIA device. And um, I think I just gave myself a reason to do so. <laughs> so, so let's uh, let's go back to the report. Let's refresh it real quick. I'm concerned though because your VS Code is not showing that you're sending any data right now. That's the concerning part. Well, that's what I'm saying is I think that that device is so is just so saturated right now that that's probably why the messages aren't coming oh, through. Okay. I mean, you know, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be, but okay. Uh, so, so yeah, still no people under under the object list. I can't. It's a little blurry on my end. Sorry. Uh, let me full screen this. Uh, yeah, so I see car, dining table, potted plant, and TV monitor are all that have been sent. And when does it think those were sent? 4.54, and that's UTC time. So it can run many instances of Chromium. You know, there actually is two instances of Chromium running on there. One for the browser window you see open, and one for um, a, a site called OBS Ninja that allows me to basically um, share my screen or audio, or that's actually what we're using for Paul's face and audio he basically joins through webrtc and obs ninja gives me a url that i can plug in as a source inside of obs so actually that device is running two instances of chromium so um i noticed when you clicked on that there's a little bit of an exclamation point next to sensor id which is maybe uh, clicked on what on the filters over there on the right it says filters on this visual sensor id is all it's got a little bit of a exclamation point there. I guess that's not important. But um, I guess the thing to, to note here, um, we can continue progress, but we'll need, we will want to debug why person is not showing up later. Yeah. Um, if you click on any of these visuals, you'll see that under the visualization section, it shows you like which fields are being used to create this. So if you wanted to create a new visual, you can click over on visualizations over there on the right and you know drag in a different type of graph and then choose which things that you want to bring in. And you can also click on them to do things like if you want to view the average, the max, and stuff like that. Uh, those options are available as well. So yeah, like um, yeah, why not? Let's try uh, let's try to create a let's try to recreate a graph from scratch just for fun. Or a card. A card's good. You can actually read the data on the card, so that'll work. Let's use a card. All right. Sorry, let me follow your 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 live screen. So I'm uh, looking at the Twitch stream right now. All right. So, so and so when you bring that in, it should ask you like, okay, what do you what do you want to display on the card? Right. Uh oh, that's the field thing, right over here. Yeah. So click 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 a visualization now, and it should yeah. There you go. Okay, so what are we showing? The count? And then, yep, exactly. Then you can wire that up with, you know, if you want to, so, so that would be the total number of detections. Or if you wanted to go in there and see the average of the count, you can click that little drop down next to count under fields. And mm -hmm. it'll give you more options. Oh, not not there on the under uh, right above where it says drill through. So in oh, the okay. visualization monitor. Sorry. Gotcha. Oh, okay. So there's our average, two point three two of, and this is of whatever we're clicking on, right? So if we say a car. So the average, and that's taking in the total count, <laughs> is saying that in the average message that is getting sent up by IoT Hub right now contains two detections. It's probably not useful, but that's to give you some understanding like how you can actually tweak these things. Hmm. So not super useful, but you know, you, you, you see the, see where I'm getting at there. I don't know why you would sum them. That would be insane, but that's, yeah. 
And the, I just don't know what the value is there. Like, wh why, why would it sum all the detections? But, oh, I guess it tells you the total. So, yeah, I think it's useful. Yeah. And you can change the visualization, too. So you've just switched this to a chart of some sort. Uh, yeah, scattered chart. chart. Which, uh, yeah, if we add, so if you, you can now drag over, like, for the legend, go ahead and, like, drag over timestamp, and you might be able to get the individual detections by time. So you can actually click. So over there on fields, you can click it and drag it over. And it should update. I apologize. When I'm looking at your screen. It's like super blurry. So it's hard to tell what's happening. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And um, we can pop this thing out. So we just want to see it kind of in detail. So that's, and that's telling you, you know, yeah, there you go. You could, you could look at, that is a, a listing of all of the entries. Not, not, not entirely useful, but if we add another access uh, or access, like on the Y, you could add another access for say like sensor ID and then see where these detections are um, starting from. Oops. Um, yes, do we have to put that on a different one? I think. Yeah, that's what I was just trying to do. I think. Um, oh, it's not letting you do that. Okay. Yeah. And so it depends on like what your data looks like. But once you you bring it in, you you can kind of see here that clicking around inside of Power BI, you can do quite a bit of damage. Um, so let's do the let's do the next thing here. So we've we've played with this a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and publish your report to PowerBI.com or .microsoft.com. So. If you um, select that publish button, it's going to ask you to save. And so you would save this to your desktop. And then hit the publish button and choose your uh, workspace that you want it to go into. Which, which, since this is like you're, you're seeing a bunch of reports from Microsoft.com there, so um, you, your your mileage may vary in terms of like how much you have to sift through. <laughs> and then you can now go to your Power BI um, instance, back to uh, the fabled area where we were waiting for the data set, and you should now see a report. And now this gets interesting. If you open that up here, so because you published it. You could now use the desktop app or the mobile app to view this report of all your object detection data. Um, but there's also a cool feature here, and there's there's nothing different here. This is just, um, if you think about it, this is like a you know a version of the report that you could share with other individuals and things like that that they could click in. It's going to do the same things it would do in the desktop app because the desktop app is essentially the editor for publishing exactly what you're seeing here. Yeah, it's really cool the way you can just share these things and you can subscribe to changes to them and all of that stuff. Oh, and it gets crazy. You can go all the way to like row level security in terms of the data that the, the report is aware of. And it'll, you know, show different people different things based on how it's been configured. It's 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 rather amazing um, how much you can create here. So it's, you know, like people look at this. Um, I know when I first saw Power BI, I was like, why do we have another thing for pivot table charts? Like Excel does this. Dude, this is this is that on steroids. I, I was being naive and didn't like look into uh, the full realm of features, and it's, it's actually pretty pretty crazy, especially you know if you're doing enterprise analytics. Yeah. So years ago, I built uh, this thing called BBQ dot Live, which is really just like a Grafana. Nice. <laughs> um, I wonder if I can find. Let me see. If, <laughs> let me see if I can find it. Uh, I gave Brian one. So I built like this whole thing. I mean, we could probably go back to some specific date. I don't even know when this was. This, this is a great analogy too. Like Microsoft Power B so Microsoft is, is to Power BI as open source is to Grafana. 4, 13, 27. But yeah, you could basically see I built out this graph that gives you each of the individual meat probes. And Holy cow. then this is the grill temp itself and the individual temps at this moment in time, the humidity. Yeah, I built this whole thing out. Um, <laughs> Arduino just pumping data to InfluxDB. But I think I need to build a Power BI version of this. 
So, um, Aaron had mentioned, I see you could throw up a table to sort of tail the detections. Um, you, you'd think about it a little different. Like in Power BI, you would select the time range that you're interested in using a page filter based on timestamp to tail the results that have happened in whatever time period you're interested in. Um, but yeah, great question. And so the, the um, next thing you can do, this is an interesting one because when you first do it, you're like, what did that do? It's like, I, I feel like I published the report again. Um, there's an option here that says pin a live page. And that's actually a little bit different. So if you pin a live page of your Power BI report, um, this turns it into what's called a dashboard. And this is a little bit different. So dashboards are um, able to show your, your data in real time. Um, so, and what I mean by that is like, they, they, they actually update, like as you're looking at, so does this, but, um, when you refresh it, but the dashboards are full on live. Um, and so this looks exactly the same as what we we're looking at, but there's also a new feature here that says, ask a question about your data. So you can go ahead in here and say, like, um, you can almost use uh, natural language very close to it. Um, you can go in there and ask a question, it'll give you some samples. Those, those aren't the greatest samples. But in our workshop um, documentation, there's quite a few. Um, I'll actually send these over to you in the chat, uh, Eric. This might be useful for you. Uh, yeah, if you scroll like all the way, a little bit higher, a little bit higher. Uh, there should be a few oh, yeah. of those listed there. Yep. So like max count of person in last minute. Um, so that sort of thing. We can't really say person here because we know we're not getting people. But we can say max count uh, TV monitor. <laughs> uh, or cars. Or that, that'd be a useful one. Max count cars by sensor ID. And instead of using sensor ID, I think you could actually say, um, I forgot what that camera was called. Um, oh, that one is called street. So I think you can actually say max count cars by street or in street and it, it'll figure it out. Nice. <laughs> can we, can we do by time? Yes. Uh, in fact, like I would challenge you to just like, think what you want to query and then just turn it into words, it'll usually figure it out and give you a result. Oh, that's pretty slick. All but right, everybody you... hit me in chat. Hit me with, with what we're asking. <laughs> it. And, and, and then when, when, when you've got one, this is, this gets even better. You can pin it to your dashboard. So you'll see over there, there's a pin visual option, like up in the upper right. Uh, you can add that to your dashboard. And then when you go back to, uh, yeah, 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 we'll use the existing one. And when you go back, you'll see it's it's there. And so so that was just giving you a, a, a count, but you can actually get it to plot things too. So like, um, let's if you give it something time-based. So we'll, as we wait for people to think of some suggestions, uh, try this one. Go back in there and ask it, like show me cars in the last minute. Something like that, so, so, something similar to that. Hmm. Let's do it by I don't know, hour. Well, the thing is, yeah, I guess it hasn't picked up a car in the last. Something is wrong. Um, something is wrong here with that data still. Do last day, maybe. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that works. What is wrong with that data? Can we group it by hour? Can we group it by hour? Um, Cause here we've got every detection, right? And so we kind of want to like roll it up. Well, like in the last day per hour, try, try it. Let's see, it. per hour. Did that work? No. Cause I've come up with some gnarly ones that, that I'll try that sometimes I'm surprised they, they will work. Um, 
we're not getting the right data live, it seems. So the, the powerful ones are things like show me stuff that you've seen in the last minute or the last 15 minutes, you know, things like that. For some reason, it looks like our data stalled out to, what is this? Well, we're getting data within the last hour. Okay, that's good. That's in the that's last day, in the last hour. Yeah, I I think that we've just got that device so pegged right now that- It can't be it though, it can't be. It's on ethernet, it can't be. Um, well, so we're, we're hitting a bit of a problem here of we can only query in as good as our data is. And there's something we probably need to continue diagnosing on the data side. Oh, is there ways to alert on this? Um, yes. Uh, so at the stream analytics level. More than N clowns. <laughs> uh, can you alert on it in the Power BI, though? Um, I know you can subscribe to it and you can get it emailed to you. So if you wanted, oh. if you wanted this like emailed to you every single day, um, you could, you could do that at a scheduled time. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other stuff that's on here. And like while Power BI can do realish time ish, um, it's not like the best for that. Now, if you did this at the stream analytics level, you could do real time alerts. And we haven't talked about it, but there's an additional service called IoT Central where you can legit build rules based on data coming in. So you can be like, okay, you know, if 15 clowns came, send me an email. Email is actually one of the built in things that it does. Um, but you can go further than that. You can e even do like if 15 clowns come, call this custom webhook that you know, activates the cannons or whatever that can we, <laughs> whatever you want to do. <laughs> can it execute functions and things like that? Uh, so it can call webhooks. So it can, it can do quite a bit. Oh, right. Cause I guess if it can do a webhook, then it could trigger an Azure function via yep. webhook. Oh no, that's actually pretty cool. Yep. So that's, that's hopefully, um, uh, giving us some ideas now. I was hoping our data would be a little bit better. So we have an option here. I guess we can ask folks. Um, do y'all want us to fix the, try to fix the the, the data that's coming across? Because there's, there's some skeptic, skepticism here, I think, with what we're seeing. We should totally see person in this data, and we're not. We should totally be seeing it. Or would y'all like us to go... There's not too much more we can really do with the Power BI stuff on account of the data not being good. So I'm almost answering the question. We need to fix that first before we can do some more powerful features. Like, um, like I, or I can share a dashboard with you real quick, Eric, that we can talk about, and then we can go do some debugging. I'll, okay. share, I'll share one with you. So I will share you my um, intelligent, uh, no, not the intelligent video analytics dashboard. I'll, I'll, I'll send you... I'll send you the one that's it's attached to my four cameras and I'll show you the, the silly things that we do with it just as soon as I can load into it and share it with you. Uh, any questions, folks, with what we've seen here so far? No yeah, my question. Power BI is not loading for some reason, so. Today is nice. like just the day of, you know, <clears throat> things not working as expected. Yeah. And it's, it, shouldn't that be Monday? Yeah, I, I exactly. Think, I'm thinking like this is Friday. This was supposed to be the like, pack it up, go home, feel good about it, what you did. Today. This was supposed to be the easy day where it's like, oh yeah. <laughs> I was even messaging Eric earlier. I was like, one so hour. yeah, I don't think we need the full two hours. Like this is definitely going to get like, like figured out in the first, you know, two hours. Or, or I'm, I'm sorry, uh, first first hour. I was even thinking like it would run less than that. And um, here we are. So I'm going to share this and I'm going to share it with you. And, and this is fine. Like, I actually, you know, Eric, honestly, I don't, this is the type of data, you know, people probably be like, you really want to share data about your camera detections? It's not like you can see me. You can just see the data about it. Yeah. It's not like that. And, and we're using YOLO V3 tiny. So there's only a limited number of things that's going to like make oh, you're, people you're aware of. Yolo V3 tiny. 
Uh, I got something else running here. <laughs> well, I, I mean, like, I, I don't think that your object detection thing is going to be telling people about a bunch of embarrassing things. It's not like, right. um, <laughs> how many times in the last hour did Paul pick his nose, right? <laughs> or hopefully not. Anyways, hopefully not. Aaron says, even my internet went down after Eric's reboot. See, I'm telling you. All you right. know what has to happen though on these these calls, which I'm a little surprised about. Like knock on wood. I, I'm sorry, Power BI is being so slow for me. I, like I'm clicking the share button and it's it's just spinning there, it's just spinning. Sorry. I want to. I want to share this with you, Eric. I just can't. Um, but you know what? This here, here's a good conversation. Well, how do you feel your quick tour of Power BI versus? Um, the uh, tour of Grafana, you know, what do you, how do you, do you see a lot of similarities here? And um, yeah, um, it, it looks like you obviously can do everything here that you could do in a Grafana dashboard, you know, plus all of the sharing tools and things like that. But the thing that I actually really like is how these filters kind of all work together so that if I click on this pie chart over here, you know, I get to see everything else adjust where I'm just, if I say I want to drill into data, it's drilling into the data everywhere and not just on that one particular thing. I also do like to, we didn't talk about this, but um, we've got the focus mode, but if you click this little thing, we can see a table of the data that makes it up. Um, we can export the data in CSV. Oh, yeah which is just super cool. So even if you were like looking at this dashboard <clears throat> because somebody else shared it with you and you're like, oh, that data is really interesting. I want to run some other stuff with it. You could just export the data for yourself and have at it. Yeah, and, and that's like, you know, you could pull it out for, you know, if you did need to say, do some analysis, like in an Excel sheet or something like that, or you wanted to send a snapshot to someone you can do that. You can totally do that. So I've just sent this over to you. Um, I don't know where it'll arrive. I think it'll arrive in your um, Microsoft email. But you know what? You might also oh, see it. Which I don't have open right now. Uh, and I don't know if you have to accept it, but maybe if you go back to Power BI and click on dashboards, you might notice you have a new one called Accelerated Edge Data Set. You, you might notice that. Um, did I close Power BI? Because I like you, and I, I, the way the you know it's funny. Like the way you learn Power BI is, well, you you, you mess with it until it works. <laughs> you know. All right, um, my workspace. No. I always forget where I need to go. Uh, or it'll be under, um, no, it wouldn't be under there. It would be under shared with me. Oh, there we go. Now, what's this one called? Uh, it should be called, um, yeah, DeepStream Power BI. There you see it. Wait, no, that's the data set. It should be called, yeah, it should be called DeepStream Power BI. I'm sorry. Yeah, click that thing. Uh, and now that see. is a report of the data coming from, from my house. So I, I used a, um, a custom model that detects people, vehicles, cars, and dogs. What? Or cats, people, vehicles, cats, and dogs, sorry. And this is because Paul has the more expensive device. <laughs> sort of. The, the Nano would actually run the same model, just not as well on four cameras. It might, it might choke a little bit on that. But um, the interesting thing is... Um, I'll show you how, how live this stuff is. Um, let me call someone to walk by one of the cameras. I'll show you how live, like, like literally park it right here. So I, I'm just curious how annoyed our families are with <laughs> this stuff, because I can tell you, I've been texting and calling people like, Hey, hey hon, can you walk by one of the cameras? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So, um, if you think the people hate it, the cats, how the heck I trained the model on the cat. 
that was that required a lot of treats a lot of uh <laughs> number oh we went blank that's okay uh, because it's accurate so it's 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 essentially saying a car probably drove by my driveway or drove by the street but you'll see in probably a minute or so my girlfriend will walk by one of these cameras and uh the people seen in last minute is gonna walk by or light up Yeah, the number of data sources is really cool for getting data into Power BI. And what what I love about this, I can like I'll, I'll set this up on like a tablet, and like the the top pieces you see here, like the live data, I will um, I'll I, I look at that like at night, and I can tell like what you know what is actually happening around you know my yard, and you know with regards to you know our people coming through and that sort of thing. Somebody just walked in the yard. Uh, yes. So, and you should see people in last minute should, should light up uh, on the next 15 second go around uh, due to the way that uh, she, looks. she must love you because it looks like she's trying to hit all of the sensors. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that particular um, visual you see there is a special one that's called a live tile. So that one is actually taking in the streaming data and it's uh, it shows it over the last minute. And then the people seen in last minute... I hope it's configured properly. Um, that sh that one should light up as well too. Um, it should anyway. So we'll see that in just a moment. Um, so max count of person in last minute by sensor ID. That's funny. I'm I'm seeing that on my side showing that there's a house and it's weird. I'm not seeing it show up on your screen yet, which is weird. But uh, this, um, up, this tile updated for you? Uh, the one in the upper left. People seen in last minute should should show something. Yeah. For whatever uh, I reason. mean, I can refresh it too. Uh, it's all good, but you you get kind of the idea here. I uh, hope. It just updated, and just before I hit refresh, like of course, so, yeah. And so, what's nice about that is um, I can look at this, you know, and just at a glance get all this data. Um, it's silly for me. I, I find like security is like maybe the most obvious thing to use this for a DIY solution, but this becomes way more valuable when you think about like if this was in a retail store, I could tell you like how many people are currently looking at shoes. You know, like I could tell you that it, it, with the same with the same pipeline that we built essentially. Yeah, and I mean you don't even need cameras for that. Or how many people are in the drive-through at the Chick Fil A? You know, and that depends. Is it a Sunday? <laughs> And there shouldn't be, right? And so you could send the alert, right? If that was the case. So, so that's that's that quick tour. Um, so if we want, like, I guess for the for the time that we have here, um, that's all I've got for Power BI. I'm I'm curious to get back to doing some diag on your uh, on that data that's coming out. I don't know what what we were seeing there. We should be seeing people in your dashboard. So do we want to? We I am still convinced that, I mean, when you look at this, I mean, it's just swapping like crazy. Yeah, but that's still, still, I mean, it should be um, pushing. Um, um, so, so in VS Code, let's, let's, um, let's monitor the built-in endpoint again and see what's coming off of there. Um. Oh, it's already doing. I'm gonna tell you it's already doing. See, what's concerning to me is we haven't gotten a new result ever since the first time it shit started showing results. That is concerning. So to stop it, I think you can. How do you stop it? You can right click inside that window uh, where it's showing you the result and go stop monitoring and then restart. We'll see if we get a a, a data point. And you might very well be right that we're just taxing that thing so hard that it's just like not pushing anything. But that, that the, that's not what it's supposed to do. So uh, the other thing we want to do, yeah, so we'll just, we'll, we'll see if that pushes data. Um, let's do a Docker PS-A on the um, Jetson device. I'm actually kind of surprised that I can even SSH into this thing. With the yeah, it's, it's, like it's that. being linked to you too. It's not like 
It's not choking. Uh, Everything's up. We stayed up except for the things that we restarted. Restart the edge runtime for this thing. Just do a full on pseudo service restart IoT edge. And then lastly, I want to look at your um, config. Iron says it's been fun. <laughs> we will do it again, Aaron. We will do it again. Oh, you and Aaron. I will definitely do it again because we want to. We want to do a. That's right. The clean state. <laughs> what am I? What am I missing here? I thought it was called IoT Edge. Yes, that's it. Pseudo service restart. IOT. Oh, IoT Edge restart services. Ah, crap. <laughs> CTL uh, syntax. I do it every time. E too many tools. And we'll let that come up. Yeah, so see, you're not getting any more data from VS Code, which is weird. Um, I kind of want to. Um, I kind of want to kill the Jetson um, screen sharing. Okay, let's do that. Let's see do whether that. see whether if we get rid of Chromium, trying to WebRTC some data, whether we can um, stop sharing. Because we shouldn't. Yeah, we shouldn't need that anyways. Um, Okay, and then now let's. I wanna, see. Yeah, I want, finally, I want to see your configuration for uh, the routes one more time. Why is that I, not? I just want to see this real. Oh wow, deep. Oh, because we restarted that. Um, PS. All right, Chromium's not running. Let's see whether. We have more resources. Oh, we're using less swap. Oh, DeepStream also just restarted too. So, okay, and that's that's gonna probably eat up. Um, Chromium browser is still running though. You see that? Yeah, I do. That is weird. Saw that for a second, anyways. Why are you not? Ah. Yeah. I'll bet you. One, one, two, two, six. All right, now let's see. Okay. <laughs> it was Chromium the whole freaking time. Was it the so we still want to see if there's data? Do we so so what's VS Code saying? Is is VS Code throwing? Wow, Chromium was eating that thing for lunch yeah oh yeah um you wonder if you get clear uh clear frames too in deep stream now no see. you shouldn't have to stop it it's it's still monitoring it for sure uh so we just have to wait the 15 seconds but i mean look at that we've only got one cpu pegged now oh yes. we, we still have over a gig of ram and swap usage is like cut in half what does mm. your uh deep stream output look like did the did the job restart yet um, yeah, I mean, it restarted it. Okay. It back no, I guess what I'm saying is it more performant now. Like you're not dropping frames and things. Oh no. I mean, I still see kind of some, some glitchiness there, okay. but, <clears throat> um, Hmm. So... Okay. Oops. Yeah. So it's not getting any messages. You bastard. <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, here's a silly trick to fix it. You could use the built-in job. We could we could change the. No, we don't want to do that though. I just wonder whether it's catching up too, though, right? Oh, uh, but no, you would see it. You'd see it dumping the messages, um, in that output if that was the case. Hmm. And deep, you're you're seeing DeepStream detecting you right now. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Docker. Logs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, this is going to take a second because it's been running for a little while. That's right. <clears throat> um, I mean, so it, 
it might be slightly more responsive, but I, I still see some ghosting in there. Okay. And I mean, that that could be the stream, the RTSP stream to the device too. There's too many... Um, Oh, there's one thing I was thinking you could turn off in your config. So believe it or not, you're also serving up an RTSP stream of the of those two videos with the object detections in the default deep stream configuration. We could turn that off. That might give you some more uh, oomph as well. So one of the output syncs is of type RTSP, and it actually exposes an endpoint. Uh, so we could turn that off as well. Go down to the um, the routes again. I just want to get a closer look at those. Well, I mean, it, it was working, right? Yeah, but it's not working now is, is the, the thing. So if you scroll up a little bit, uh, scroll to the right, that, that looks right. Um, do this. I wonder if we didn't accidentally um, maybe not save before we generated the deployment. That that can happen. If you, if you go into the... Um, don't don't regenerate it just yet. Click on the deployment configuration or uh, uh, under the config folder that deployment.arm. And let's make sure that 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 is proper. Oh, uh, you're talking about the one that was generated for us? Yeah, the one that was generated. Make sure that that actually generated with the proper route. Yeah. Yeah, it looks right to me too. From messages module summarize detections into upstream. I'm what trying did, to think. Oh, go ahead. What did we do last time? I think we just uh, rebooted the restarted the hub or the eight. Was it the hub? Well, you you restarted the runtime, so that would restart everything. It's not pushing data. Why? It, my 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 concern is that it's the route isn't right. Like it wants to push data, it's something's not right there. And that's we did manage to get data there though. That's the thing, right? But it was like temporary, and then it stopped. Now it's it's no longer doing it. That's what's concerning. Hmm. Try try this real quick. Um, let's use the old job, uh, the one that it shipped with. And just see if that fixes this. Uh, so I'll paste you the link to that. Slack. Let's use the, uh, not our group chat. I'll paste it to you directly. And re replace the, because I wonder if there's not something wrong with the ASA job that it's pulling down. I, I, like It's not sending data for some reason. Yeah, that doesn't work. Can't reach. Oh, really? Yes, can't reach this page. Oh, well, let's see here. And that's the thing I just paste, pasted over to you? Okay. Yeah, I see the same thing. Okay, the, uh, disregard that. For some reason, we're still not sending data. There can, there can only be a few things. It's it's the the job, the route. <laughs> so we're generating the data here. I can see that. Uh, let's look at the IoT hub and see that it's actually see if there's any cloud to device messages. I, I have a feeling you're going to see those are like flat right now. Uh, wait. I, no. Yeah, Edge. Like, uh, no, in, in, in Azure, sorry. Let's look at the oh. overview of the IoT Hub, sorry. Because... Um, nope, that's stream analytics. Uh, let's just look, look, look under this resource group. Uh, da, 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 da. Hmm. Where's our resources? This has been an odd day. It, totally, totally. Um, and I'm so confused by this. Like, there we go. Um, IoT Hub. 
and we should see that it like just all of a sudden just stopped. So device to cloud messages. Yeah, it's like you had some, now you don't. Yep. Yeah, so you haven't had any sense. What the hell did we fix that time? But I mean, look, I mean, this sort of happened over the course of like five minutes. And I don't know that we did anything here. I have the feeling it has something to do with the device, the device just getting saturated. Uh, reboot it. Reboot the whole device. Yeah. All right, let's just do that. But I've never seen that before, though. The it's not like the Edge Hub's just gonna hang up. I've never seen that. But I mean, anything's possible. Restart. Intermission. And restarting. when you and the thing that's telling is that when you did apply the new configuration, we started getting data back. Mm -hmm. So it did it like worked temporarily and then it stopped. Worked temporarily and then it stopped. But I I still am convinced that it stopped because that device was so saturated. I mean, the, okay. all of the CPUs were pegged. All of the RAM was being used up. It <laughs> was using like two gigs of swap. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because everything else is checking out. So we should be able to see this. Uh, what's the delay on this? Um, uh, it's 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 pretty bad. It's it's like a few minutes. Okay. Yeah, definitely not real time. What do we have that's the closest to real time that we would be able to tell? VS Code, the monitoring, the built-in endpoint will be the closest. All right. Device is back up. Just waiting for it to log in and for a deep stream. I would be showing the screen right now, but uh, OBS does not like me today either. We're 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 debugging for your for your enjoyment. Those who are still here, because something's wrong with that. It's just like. Hmm. Just waiting for DeepStream to start. I'm curious, uh, show of hands, who actually likes watching people like break stuff and try to fix it? I don't know, I, I actually enjoy that kind of stuff. I end up, I guess that's probably because I taught myself to code this way through failure. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get like hard. dive deep into understanding how stuff works in order to um fix it let's see all right so we're back up um that's right we wanted to do this so we need to stop monitoring and then start monitoring and then in theory, we need to wait 15 seconds, if I recall. Yeah, but maybe a little longer because Edge has to start. So on the on the um, shell session you have, let's do like a watch Docker PSA, make sure things are coming up. Um, okay, so these are new. Up about a minute, up two minutes. So hubs up, agents up, um, stream analytics is up, camera tagging module is up, NVIDIA DeepStream SDK is up. So that should be everything, right? Yeah, and then let's do, uh, let's let's look at the, uh, the, the DeepStream analytics module. Let's log, log that thing real quick. Oh, sorry, the DeepStream Analytics one. Oops. I always do that every time you're like, let's look at the logs of this thing. I mean, they are named confusing. It's not your fault. It's mine. <laughs> I could have called it Stream Analytics job or something, you know, that makes sense. So see, like, what is, what is this process events? Wait, what is this? Job status paused. Uh, 
Uh, that shouldn't be doing that. Uh, Docker RMF that thing. That should not be doing that. that was... Module job status successful. And then we'll watch it again. Yeah, that's, yeah, okay. That'll tell you why it's not pushing any data. I mean, if the job is paused, then yeah. Who, who pressed pause? <laughs> who's, who's to blame? Well, and you can't, I didn't know you could pause one of these at the edge, but somehow it's paused itself. I bet it paused itself because of the memory. I bet it did. And now it's just, it locked it up. I bet you that's what's ha what happened. I bet you just found a really cool bug. I hope so. Oh, uh, like it somehow stops itself, and but there's nothing to recognize that it's safe to, to start again? Exactly. I hope that is what happened because that is really cool. If you if you stumbled on that, yeah. If you, I mean, if you're keeping notes, um, like just write something down for us to try that because I mean, it would be an easy way to test it, right? You know, your device is working perfectly. If we just do something to absolutely Open peg Chromium. the CPU, <laughs> <I'm> right? <laughs> reproduce Open Chromium. Something crazy like you know, open two instances of Chrome. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe how much memory that was. I mean, granted, I think it was an HD feed of, you know, the, the desktop. Job status idle. I got to hand it to you because, um, I mean, as obvious as it was that it was pegged, I'm thinking to myself, nah, these things can trudge along. But you, you, you got it. I think you got it, dude. This is looking, that just sent something, I'm pretty sure. Uh, maybe. Maybe. No, we we want the we want to wait for the next the next uh, roll around another fifteen seconds. Sorry, this is looking good though. So you've got out of order events, cool. in progress All right. so that was a message so vs code might show you something right now no nope. actually well okay let's wait till it let's wait till the deep stream analytics job does that yet again which i think is another 15 seconds approximately should you'll keep on seeing that metric no the metrics report i'm sorry is actually a little longer i think that's like a minute or so uh, so it is a little odd. It's not telling us the job's running. Let me look at the error or, or what, what the logs look like for mine. I got one that is running. Mm. Sorry. Sorry to keep you so late on a Friday. This is important, though. This is super important. Let's see. Yeah, I don't see any new data here. Do we see? see Sorry, go ahead. Thirty three. I'm restarting a job on my side to see if there's some difference here, because the only thing that called out to me, I saw it said your job was idle. OK, I think that's normal, though, when it starts. OK, so now it says job status processing. That's good, but still no data coming out of it. Hmm. Still no data coming out of that job. And it, it's like it worked up until we changed it. <laughs> yeah. What's your, what's your uh, Git history say on that file? Or, um, if you open it in VS Code. On this one? Yeah. So if you go over there on, on the left, yeah, let's. I just want to see what the diff is on it right now. Yeah, that works. Uh, well, yeah, of course, it's not a commit, but... Um, yeah, what are, what are the current changes that it's seen on that? Well, it's going to be everything, right? Because this is an automatically generated file. It'd be this one we'd want. Oh, to yeah, 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 that's the one. All right. Yeah, so we have quite a bit in here. Oh, what is this? Oh, there is a incoming change. See this? 
All right, so we've got an issue here where there's actually a merge conflict. Shouldn't matter though. That shouldn't matter. Well, no, um, this file has both versions in it at one time. So the question is which one is out? Oh. I'm thinking a really quick way to fix this is uh, discard changes. We change back to the yellow V3 config deploy that and watch what happens do you want me to just reset get reset this one? Oh wait 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 uh, uh. yeah what'd you just send nothing message Type. received from jetson nano 458 yeah but that's not that's not the way the data is supposed to look like at all oh there's that that is though yeah. the speech, train and all that that's right so maybe stuff was just still starting up I wouldn't expect it to take that long. Okay. And that that is uh why is that saying timestamp 619 749? We're at the zero zero mark right now. Delay. Yeah, is it like is it going through and running this on old data? It's quite possible, right? Because all of that data was being collected and then not actually being pushed out. So, I mean, it's quite possible that this is going to churn through all of the old data. If it's doing that, it's doing it really <laughs> slow. Um, uh, do, 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 uh, do something here. Like, um, yes, you have these changes stashed. Let's, let's revert and then let's change the file to use the yellow V3 config and then go from there. Something's wrong. We'll use the, uh, Either stash or do the weak trick of copy what's in that current config to a, a notepad somewhere. Right. Yeah, yeah. They're both uh, um, I, I know you're better than that, but I'm like, just take what you have right now. Let's revert it to like the, the, the shipped configuration that worked. Change the, the config and you should start getting the right data. So it has me skeptical about how accurate the steps were yesterday. But no, this should have uh, worked. Because that, that could be the thing too. We might be just choked from data because um, because our route was screwed up for a whole day. Maybe it's going back and running stream analytics on a whole day's worth of stuff. And like that's not good. We don't want that. That's still not happening every 15 seconds either. <clears throat> right. So, so yeah, uh, over there where you see the icon that says the, t the note has the number two, uh, go ahead and click on that. Icon has the number two. Yeah. Your, uh, chain that's the, the, uh, impending changes wow. over there and, uh, right click deployment template.json or whatever, and, uh, discard changes. Um. Uh, will it let you discard those? No, I think we have to accept. We just need to accept this incoming change, which is fine, because this is all of our changes. So accept incoming change. Okay. Then, then we should be okay. Um, accept all incoming. All right. And then we should be able to stash the changes. Okay. Um, hold. Doesn't really matter. That works. Yeah. And can we somehow get it to what the config is that is shipped right yeah. now in that, in that source code? Yeah, get it to that. Um. Which is a little bit annoying, but it'll get us, it'll solve this problem for us today. This is weird. I wonder if this is an issue with Windows Git. Uh, what are you seeing? Because it's not allowing me to resolve that. It's just really weird. Uh, if you want to do it the weak way, just uh, copy the raw. I can just 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 blow this thing. Okay. Yeah, let's let's blow away the the deployment back to vanilla. What? <laughs> oh, it's not even in there. I did fix it. <laughs> All 
Oh, uh, res- sorry, reset was spelled wrong there. Oh, I apparently cannot spell. Oh, restore. Yeah, that'll, that that should that should get us right. That's what I tried to do before. Get reset. That should try to find. Unknown revision. What? Uh. This is so weird. So I, I sent you the raw. If you just copy paste that in, that'll that'll do the effectively the same thing. What a freaking mess! Yeah. I'm not judging you. On not being able to get reset that. I'm not judging you. Don't I worry. Don't, yeah, I don't I don't even know why that's uh a... that was weird though, dude. Like what the heck was that? Like I thought get reset hard was like a, a tried and true command. It always worked. I mean you're right, it might be a Windows thing. I mean So okay. I mean really we could All right, we okay. are we are in a clean repository. It's yeah, so a square now. Cool. Okay. If you've never used git ref log, it is like the shit. It basically shows you everywhere head has pointed, so that includes changing branches and stuff uh. like that. So you can go back in history and basically repoint where you're sitting at. So Why is it being a, a punk about Power BI report that PBIX? Oh, that's just an untracked file. That's where I saved it. That's ah, okay, yeah. okay. That so, makes sense. That's where we saved when we did the import. Okay. Okay. So now, don't don't save. Okay. So now we can go into here, and where was our YOLO? Uh, just oh. a little bit. Yeah, up a little bit further. And dude, I'm looking. It just sent a person. <laughs> Of course, so. but it's not sending every 15 seconds, so something's wrong. I mean, are we still saturated here? Nah, no way. Well, more so than before. So yeah, we'll change that config to the yellow three config, or yellow v3 tiny. Uh, wait, where's the config we're looking for? You just passed it, just passed it. Uh, right there. Oh, there we go. That was uh, getting, getting that one for you. I think it's this. That seems right. Yeah. Okay. So now we should be able to generate an IoT deployment manifest. And then we're going to send it to our device. And if anyone cares what we're doing, we're, we're undoing what we don't know happened to this file. That's all. We're just undoing. Yeah, so we had this starting file, which we had a very primitive model that we were using, which is what you just saw me change to something called YOLO v3. Um, so that's us changing which object detection model we're using as part of this deployment. And we had updated a, this stream analytics module here, but we had done it by using a plugin that's part of VS Code, but it also changed a bunch of other things inside of this deployment. And we're curious whether or not something in there changed that broke stuff. Okay, so that is redeployed. All right, and I don't think there was the the only difference now is you're using my job instead of your job. That's the only difference. Right. So we should be able to stop and start. And then uh, let's watch that job restart too uh, on the on the Jetson. I guess let's just do a PS because we should be able to see. Um... Well, I don't know that it restarts because it's a uh, it's a desired property change, so it actually changes uh, the runtime state. So um, logs should should help us here. Uh, what are we logging? Edge. Uh, Deepstream. 
dot deep string. Okay, and so now you have swapped over to a new job that was published on 328. So that's the right, so we know, we know that job um, was working. I, and your job, I mean, I saw you build it yesterday. It is the right job. You didn't do anything wrong there, no doubt. Um, the question then becomes, it must have, it must have done something to the routes. Job like this, status paused. And that's that's okay because it's it just reinitted the job. So it did the download ASA package. So that's okay. And then it's gonna restart and this should all work. This magic. Re we'll restart engine in one minute. Oh, critical errors. Failed to download job definition from blog. Uh oh. I bet my job expired. <laughs> They warned us about that. And of course it would expire today because it didn't expire yesterday. It did not expire yesterday. That is for sure. So let me regenerate the job, send you a new URL. Holy cow. This is. I've got a hard stop in, I don't know, about 15 minutes. Okay. Let's, I'll be mindful of that. Let's, uh. I'll, I'll recreate the job on my end. I didn't think that that would ever happen. So it always happens. <laughs> my favorite is like when very prominent websites um, forget to renew their SSL certs. And I'm like, we're not alone. Everybody does it. Everyone does it. <laughs> and, and you know, the, 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 the concern was when you sent me that screenshot not but a few moments ago and you were like, hey, it says it can't pull this. And I'm just thinking to myself, well, I'll bury my head in the sand on what you just showed me. Uh, it looks like those SAS URLs do expire, which is, I would have thought they, well, 90 days approximately, right? 90 days or so before it expired. And, and so just to kind of explain, there's a, this URL that's kind of being handed down by um, IoT Edge saying this is where you can fetch a zip of the code, I guess, to execute um, for this job. And that URL is only valid for some period of time. So I think we ended up in a, in a state where um, IoT Edge running on the device is trying to fetch the job and can't. It recognizes it's it's supposed to be running a workload and it's it's failing. That is funny. Yeah, that is <laughs> it's funny. It it expired. I'm I'm it's funny. I clicked publish and it's like taking forever to publish. So just hang tight with me. These don't usually take this long. Yeah, one of my contacts on the PM side had, had warned of this. They said, uh, you know, you want to be careful if you share these because they can they can expire. Um, and you didn't trust them. Oh, I trusted them. I just didn't know when it would expire. Um, and it, I'd been running happily for 60 days, you know, or so. And there was no issue. So that's so weird. Well, I mean, that wouldn't have been the issue with my job, though. Right, and I guess we could re-add your job, but I mean, this is a, a, all a mess right now. Um, okay, so Azure's just not letting me publish a job. That's cool, real cool. I've hit publish here. We're waiting like two minutes now for this to spit something out and nothing's happening. I'm just going to say that it's a feature. It is past 5 p.m. on a Friday, so Azure's just like, nope. No deploying on Friday after 5 p.m. I mean, it's a little. Oh, my gosh. I know why I deleted the TSI store that this thing was stored in just the other day. <laughs> Oops. 
All right. Well, I mean, I don't think we're going to get too much further on it today. Um, oh, no. Uh, I just, I got to I recreate the container. We're there. We're there. Um, give me just a moment here. Just a moment. Dot com, he says, that could be one reason. <laughs> Yeah, I deleted it. Um, and, and the reason why I deleted it was so that I could go into today feeling confident that you could create this stuff from scratch. So I, I literally created this whole thing from scratch, not thinking that maybe there was something that this all depended on. Yeah, and I'm not convinced yet that some of it isn't a device issue here. Well, your job should have worked too, because I, you know, we saw your your job come up yesterday, and that seemed fine. Well, that's what I'm saying is I I kind of have this sneaking suspicion here. And what is okay. this? If we go backwards, what are we minus four right now? Minus five, four forty nine. Yeah, so I mean, we're like twenty minutes lag behind. Is what it looks like for this data. Oh, really? <laughs> Well, wait, there, no, that's no, because um... no, that's not right. 619 time 1949. So that'd be 749 uh, minus five hours to, oh, we're, we're way lagged. So I can't, are we minus five or minus four right now? Uh, we are, uh, oh, I, I don't know. I don't know. So, but regardless, that would be 249 or 349. Right. So, and it is 516 right now. So, this oh, just... so we're, yeah, we're definitely off. Yeah. Okay. Let me get the, uh, well, this almost worked. Let me get the uh, stream. I, I actually want to think, it, 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 it doesn't like that. It was configured. So, of course, the, when I created the new storage account, um, I gave it the same name. <laughs> and so, it, like, it thinks it thinks it already knows that there's a storage account that it can use. And no, you can't. So, oh, we might well, have I think we're going to try to do this from start to finish um, again anyway. So, do we want to just take some questions and show off some stuff? Because... I think the likelihood of us debugging this and getting it working uh, before yeah. my hard stop are probably slim. Or uh, I can take questions while you work. What's that? Yeah, we'll take questions while I republish the job or okay. figure out how to get this job republished. And that should do it. Did anybody who's following along have questions or questions about um, parts of this that maybe were in prior episodes, which is interesting. There was four prior episodes we recorded. Those are on YouTube. No issues, none. <laughs> Episode five, all of the issues, all of them. All of them. I think yeah. I, I may order one of the um, the Xavier devices if I can get my hands on one. Cause you, I don't think those are really available for one-off purchase, right? It's mostly. For what do you mean? Like, can I just order a single Xavier device? Yeah, yeah, totally. They're on Amazon and all that. Yeah, you can get you can get one if you if you want just one. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Because now I kind of want to buy one and <laughs> see what this thing th can do with some real power. <laughs> I'm also curious how much of it is the cameras too, because I mean they are cheap. $25 eBay cameras as well. Uh, the cameras, so I use the same brands at home and they, they tend to work pretty well. I think, I, you know, I, and it could also be something in our configuration that there was that concern yesterday as well. Like, you know, or could we turn off like the RTSP endpoint that it's streaming? Cause it's, it's wasting cycles and coding those frames for that. And we've, we've never even used that or even showed it right. on a long frame. So that would be like if I wanted to. I suppose we could right now, right? Yeah, um, yeah, we totally could disable that. To see if it. Gives well, us I mean, also we could connect to it, right, on VLC. Yep. Um, we just need the format of the URL. 
Let's see. It'd be kind of fun. We should have been doing that. Right. Than... All right. So I know that it is RTSP. Uh, and I know it's here. Do you know what port it's running on? Standard 554? 554, five, five, yep. And it, it, tells you the, it tells you the URL for it when you restart DeepStream. It's kind of the easiest way to find it. Uh, do we have a username and password for it? No, no, it'll be wide open. Um, connection failed. That should be yeah. it. Um, so we could Docker logs deeps. No, NVIDIA deep stream. And then I guess we could grep that for our TSP and see what we get. Okay, these are inputs. Huh. Playback mode with use with URI not conforming to timestamp format. So it's actually yelling at the timestamp format for the cameras. Which I find interesting. Oh, that's okay. That's a yeah. You can ignore that. That's uh We could. You could, if you wanted, you could use that. Use. There's an option in there. Use sys NTP or something. Uh, uh, so this is actually not bound to the public. Ah. Uh, um. Uh, maybe, maybe it is. Let's try eight five five four. Right. And then it was like a DT test. Yeah. Let's try eight five five four. That sounds right. Because may sounds... maybe it is a public interface eight. Because the way you hide ports in use is add eight in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> right. D T test. Okay. No. Okay. So it might be bound to just the local interface. Eight five five four slash d oh d s deep stream test. Up oh, up oh, there we go. So and you got it up. Yep. So it is pushing the um our TSP stream of our. It's running rather slow though. You that can be tweaked big time in terms of you know how much bit rate you want to use and things like that, but. And that's what I'm thinking. If it's running slow, it makes me wonder, like, how much resources is that hogging? Uh, I mean, we we could find out. <laughs> Where do we turn that off? I'm like racing against the clock over here, creating a new uh, new storage. Oh yeah, CPU is pegged again. <laughs> Uh, now we're now we're dying down. Okay, I'm so close to getting this fixed. Like so close, Eric. I'm sorry. This is kind of on me for accidentally deleting that job. I feel like but... there's a lot of stuff we could remove from this device too. Like we don't need a full blown ubuntu desktop install for all of this so there's a project out there called jets and containers that that addresses that uh, it can it can build flashable images essentially um uh for for jets and devices and it's all done with containers it's actually a pretty cool project how it does it uh, it's it's a guy at microsoft that's behind that one as well um Where's my storage storage account, buddy? Don't see it. I just need a storage account to drop that job into, and it's like um, all the things are going wrong. For some reason, when I go to select it, it's, oh, there it goes. It showed up. Finally. Finally. Okay. 
right, SAS jobs. Container successfully created. All right, now publish the job URL and please don't be tricked this time. If we get it in the next few minutes, then we'll have it. We'll have it fixed. Come on. So this, the step I'm doing over here if, uh, is yesterday when we were doing the published job, it, it's just hanging for me for some reason. Which is bizarro. Well. I think we may have to lock it up for today and then we can try and get back on here and see. I'm... I will I will message you probably on the uh on the private channels later when I get this thing up, but yeah, it doesn't look like it's happening now. My apologies. So well sorry everybody. Well, I mean we everybody got to see the end result. So anybody who hung out was really hanging out to uh, watch us try to debug why this thing is not sending data um, or at least in any kind of efficient manner. So we've got some sort of issue here on the device uh, with forwarding in a timely manner. So we can try and debug that a little bit more offline and then maybe we can come back on and do like a retrospective to talk about what we figured out was the issue and i mean i feel like this device because you've had pretty good um luck with performance even with more cameras than i'm using right. so I, I have a sneaking suspicion because i also had an issue with where this dice device would just like randomly restart itself so there's a possibility too that there's an issue with the device itself so but these things happen. They happen. So I think I think we got this. We'll we'll figure everything out and we'll reconvene at a later date to finally get to the final episode and we'll get it right. <laughs> so all right, well thank you everybody for hanging out. Um if you haven't already, please follow me. We'll do more stuff like this. Paul and I have some other ideas. I kind of alluded to the barbecue thing. I might have to recreate my barbecue grill controller. Um doing stuff. I might do that in Rust just for a project to do in Rust. Um, and I'll probably do some container stuff too. So, all right. Thanks everybody. Thanks everyone.